I sit here at the Golden Lion Coaching Inn, enjoying the bustle and busyness of this transport hub. English accents, Welsh spoken. I hear London voices and Middle English accents too. I have always loved travelling. I am well practised in packing my trunks. I'm also well practised in engaging interesting fellow travellers and disengaging, tiresome and irritating ones. Who am I, you ask? I am... Good morning, madam. Am I right in thinking I speak to Mrs Frances Brooke? The Mrs Frances Brooke. My apologies for approaching you, Mrs Brooke. My father is landlord here and I saw your name on the passenger manifest and I just had to speak with you. I am Frances Brooke. And I am a Vanoy Havard, a writer an aspiring writer. To meet a true writer such as yourself is truly exciting. Do sit, Mistress Havard. Thank you. You are young to be deciding you will be a writer. Not too young, Mrs Brooke. I have been reading and writing since I could toddle. Really? Oh yes, and your works have certainly inspired me. I have with me your two novels, The History of Lady Julia Manville and The History of Emma Montague. They're precious to me. I write myself. I started with a childish diary and then began writing my own stories. You have read my novels. It was my mother who first introduced me to your work. She has all the copies of your essays. The Old Maid by Mary Singleton. You, of course. She taught me to read from them. And now I can't read enough. I read anything and everything. How gratifying to know that my words have inspired other women. At first, it was my aim to record my experiences as a woman an unmarried woman. But later I began to think that other women might think like me or experience the same kind of problems as I did and still do as a woman alone in a very masculine society. Oh yes, Mrs Brooke, I comprehend your meaning. Young and inexperienced as I am in this world, this masculine world already inflicts itself upon me. My father and mother have successfully run this coaching inn for 20 years. From childhood, they have taught me how to organise and promote every aspect of our business. I am my parents' heir. None of my brothers survived childhood. Ah, the lone female heiress. A type often seen at plays in the theatre. How satirical to see myself played on the boards. Taken as a cipher, an empty thing on the boards. And in real life too, treated as a cipher. A truly empty thing by suitors young and old. You enjoy the theatre, Mistress Havard? Oh yes. We have a new theatre here in Brecon where Mr Watson's players do perform. Mr Watson? I know him well. I was both performer and theatre manager at the Opera House in London. You have been an actor and theatre manager. What an experience. In London too. Not only did I enjoy the cut and thrust of running a business, but to create such entertainments was marvellous. To write them and plan their glorious construction for audiences from all over the world. It quickened my blood and gave me such deep satisfaction. I managed performers from all over the world too. Such jolly times. I made a pretty penny too, mind. This is what I plan to do, Mrs Brooke. I will run the Golden Lion Coaching Inn with the same wit and vigour taught me by my loving parents. And I shall write plays. I've read your comic opera, Rosina, and I saw a performance of Rosina at Theatre Brecon. To see an opera written by a woman gave me such hope that one day I could write a play which could be performed at Theatre Brecon, or indeed in any theatre, and I shall make profit from both in keeping and playwriting. You have ambition. You are clever. You know what you want. This is a good state to find yourself. For it is a painful consideration, my dear, that the happiness or misery of our lives are generally determined before we are proper judges of either. I have not spoken thus to either of my beloved parents. I plan to be my own judge. It is a hard fact to digest that, in order to become a true legal landlady of the Golden Lion, 
I have to take a man to husband. He becomes the owner, the landlord, and owner of my inheritance in the eyes of the law. I'm only 15, but already I'm aspired as a good prospect. Ah, there I can advise you. When the great tragic actress, Mary Ann Yates and I, decided to co-manage a theatre in London, we had to think and plan carefully. Mary Ann's husband and my brother's names were on the legal papers. On paper, they were the managers. But we had the talent, the wit and the business acumen to run a theatre in London. You must choose your man, the name on the legal papers, well. Be sure he will give you your head in the business. And if not, select one that you can manage with your wit. And if needs be, your feminine wiles. <laughs> I will think on it, Mrs. Brooke. I will think on it. My journey continues. I'm so glad to have met you, Mrs. Brooke. I'm truly honoured. The pleasure was all mine. I must go. The next time I come through Brecon, I will seek you out, Mavanoi Havard of the Golden Lion Coaching Inn. I'm writing a one-woman show, The Joys and Travails of a Woman's Life. I would like your opinion. What an idea. I look forward to seeing you and reading it. Till we meet again, farewell. Fare thee well. <laughs>